We play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers. Josh here to bring you some coverage of Mini Wargaming's first narrative featuring primarily guest participants. I was lucky enough to attend Adepticon 2018 and host a small event at 24 players. This event was organized to set the groundwork for future events at conventions as well as the Mini Wargaming Bunker. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the background information for the Battle of Ocinia Prime as well as the results of the games. We have a second video linked in the description below that features footage Luca took while playing in the event, as well as the showcases of some of the armies that were present. The call to arms originally went out to prospective participants with the following message. The Hadox anomaly has temporarily receded, revealing systems not seen for decades. Ocinia Prime, a lush world of vast material resources and forgotten relics is ripe for the taking, and High Command has tasked you with securing this planet and repelling all potential enemies. In no time at all, we had our list of participants that signed up and went about to splitting them up into teams. Based on the factions of the players who signed up, we broke them into two teams, which was the Imperium and the opposing forces. The vast armies of the Imperium of Man have showed up to Ocinia Prime in overwhelming force to claim what they believe is rightfully theirs. While the Imperium wields the single largest force, they have also stretched themselves thin. Finding a common enemy, various Xenos and traitor factions have struck at the beleaguered Imperial defenders in hope that the unwieldy Imperials will not be able to bring their forces to bear before the attackers fade away. Team Imperium was made up of various Space Marine chapters, a few contingents of Adeptus Custodias, as well as a regiment of the Death Corps of Krieg and Knights from House Regium. Unsubstantiated rumors began to surface of an inquisitorial presence, but nothing was able to be confirmed as the Imperium began planetfall. So big thanks to all the Team Imperium participants, and that was Dennis, Jacob, Christopher, Benjamin, Max, James, Austin, Daniel, Kevin, Will, Josh and Jonas. Team Opposing Force consisted of a mix of Traitor Astartes, Chaos Demons, a Dark Eldar Raiding Party, an Uprising of Gene Stealer Cultists, a Tendril of Hive Fleet Cthulhu, as well as a Tau Expeditionary Force. So again, thanks to Anthony, Craig, Michael, Sean, Dawson, Devin, Jared, Drew, Thomas, Tony, Daniel, and our very own Luca. The players duked it out over three rounds using standard match play rules and missions. In addition to their standard victory conditions, each player was assigned a secret secondary objective. Even in defeat, they could still contribute to their faction's progress overall. The secret orders ranged from Inspire the Troops, which demanded that a player's warlord must end the game in the enemy deployment zone or closer to the enemy deployment zone than any of your other units, to no witnesses, which required players to ensure their opponent had no characters left at the end of the game. The first round saw the Imperium come out swinging hard, winning 8 out of 12 of their matchups and completing 7 out of 12 of their secondary objectives. The servants of the Primordial Annihilator found themselves outmatched and only managed to sneak one win in out of 6 games, but they did manage to complete 2 of their secondary objectives. The various Xenos races didn't fare any better and were thoroughly trounced by stalwart Imperial defenders, except for both the Gene Stealer Cultists and Tyranids who savaged the Blood Angels and Black Templars, winning both their games and completing both their secondary objectives. There have been reports of a curious artifact being found by the 17th Krieg Armored Regiment. The forces of Tech Priest Dominus Severus Aladax arrived alongside Inquisitor Jadis Norn to secure the device. Without warning, the Skatarii opened fire and the disciplined warriors of Krieg manned their defenses. As the dust settled, the apparent treachery of the Inquisitor known as the White Witch was revealed and the inconclusive battle saw her make a hasty exit. The Imperial forces had held firm in the first round and the second round saw them redouble their efforts in hopes of holding back the opposing forces. They once again had a strong showing and were able to win two-thirds of their games and secured more than half of their secondary objectives. The Chaos forces improved a little from the last round and only managed one win as the Sorceress Thousand Sons were able to claim victory against the Dark Angels. The various insidious Xenos armies found themselves on the receiving end of vicious counterattacks from the Crimson Fist's Third Company and the full might of the heroes of the Adeptus Custodes. The only successful Xenos army was once again the Tyranids as they swept aside Grandmaster Osric Balorum of the Grey Knights. Responding to reports of the Treacherous Inquisition and Adeptus Mechanicus Alliance, a company of Ultramarines sought to destroy the warriors of the Adon Prime Underforge. Inquisitor Norn lived up to her reputation and smashed aside the Astartes standing in her way. 
The final round saw the weary Imperials falter slightly, winning seven matches, but only completing two of their secondary objectives. Each Xeno's race was systematically defeated once again, and only the Tyranids holding onto their foothold on the planet. The traders found a slight improvement over the last two rounds as the Black Legion Sorcerer Iskandor Kion found victory over Loyalist Astartes forces and brought the total to two Chaos victories this round. Seeking vengeance for their brother Astartes, the Black Templars fell upon the Mechanicum forces led by Explorator Aladax. Although the mechanically augmented warriors were slaughtered, the White Witch was able to evade capture and remains at large. As the dust settled, the Imperium has managed to withstand almost everything the opposing force was able to throw at them, with only the Tyranids managing to maintain a foothold on Ocinia Prime. But with any hopes, this is just the beginning of this story, and this is something I want to expand upon both when I get the chance to attend some other events, as well as when we get the bunker up and running and I can start to run some narrative events. So again, big thanks to everybody that took part at Adepticon. You guys were awesome. Uh, check out the link in the description below to go to part two of the video where Luca has got some footage from his various games that day. And then I got the chance to talk to some of the participants and showcase their armies. Thanks so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome. And as always, happy wargaming.